I'm Pierre Etienne Martin and I'm presenting for Medieval 2020. In this video, I'm going to present the sports video classification task that we have um, suggested to Medieval 2020. I am working with Jenny Benoit Pinault, Boris Massenskal, Renaud Petri, Laurent Mascaria, Jordan Calandre, and Julien Morier. This task is a work of the University of Bordeaux through the library, a computer science laboratory, and the Faculty of Sport, but also from the University of La Rochelle through the EMEA laboratory. Uh, we are all part of the same project, the CRIS project. The CRIS project has for goal to improve athlete performances through tools for trainers and athletes. We apply that to table tennis, and the goal from a given video is to be able to segment in time the stroke that has been performed, but also to get its classification. So as a difference from classical action classification, here we deal with fine-grained action classification because we are focusing on only one sport with different strokes. An example of tools that we could uh, propose to trainers and athletes is a platform where um, the classification model could be used to segment and give the distribution of the stroke that has been performed during the games. By doing so, the trainer can rely on such platform to then adapt his training session. It is also the first step for a bigger scheme where we could add a layer to this platform and give an appreciation of the stroke that has been performed. To that aim, in collaboration with the sport faculty of the University of Bordeaux, we have built the TT Stroke 21 dataset. This dataset contains videos of students performing during training session or match conditions. The same student also annotate those videos through a crowdsourced platform using a taxonomy of 20 classes. On the top of these annotations, we can read the negative samples. Also, the annotations need to be filtered because annotator could make mistakes or also disagree on some strokes. When it's the case, we are not using those samples. For this task, we provide a subset of Tetris Stroke 21 with videos recorded at 120 frames per second. We can have a look at the data distribution and we can see uh, that the concentration of strokes is not always the same. For example, for the offensive for an forehand hit, we have a greater concentration in the test set and less in the train set. To have access to this data, we had written particular conditions uh, that need to be accepted using an institutional email address. These particular conditions imply deletion of the dataset after a year and the blur of the faces and no redistribution of the dataset. Even if the faces have been blurred using an automatic tool, some faces remain uh, non-blurred. The task is to classify trimmed video. We provide the video with the temporal segmentation and the classes of those segments. We provide a test file where there are only the temporal annotations and the participant has to replace the unknown class that we have put in this test file by the prediction. Participant may submit up to five runs. The evaluation is done using accuracy metric. We observe especially the global accuracy, meaning the accuracy over all the strokes. But uh, we also have some interests uh, of the classification of the drive only. The drive is the forehand and backhand classes. The context, if it's a serve, an offensive or more defensive stroke. And also we can take the combination of those two, which means six classes. Also for this year, we were asked to provide performances with all the classes, but without considering the drive, meaning that the number of classes is divided by two. This year, the number of participants has uh, increased compared to last year. We had 22 subscriptions against 13 last year. However, we had only five submissions, but still increased. We had only three submissions last year, and uh, we are happy because all the submission has provided a working note paper and are planning to present during the workshop. In the subscription, we noticed that uh, two people subscribed subscribe twice and uh, 10 were valid participants with access to the data. However, uh, five of the people with access to the data did not answer um, after that. 
This year also the results are increased. So it is, a, I don't know how to pronounce, but the HBKU unit similar that uh, got the first rank with 31.4% of accuracy. Uh, against last year, the best was 22.9% of, of accuracy. We can also notice the much better performances obtained by looking only at the drive of the strokes. This is very interesting and it is due to their methods that they have used for classification by sampling the different classes into superclass as we actually recommended last year. Uh, what we suggest for better performances, so it's a multi-label or in cascade method. This was done with the team that ranked first. Uh, also, we think that the build of negative sample could be useful since we provide full videos with temporal annotations, the rest of the video could be used as negative. Also, data augmentation is very important to avoid overfitting. Also, the split of the data set is very important since the train set and the test set are from different videos, sometimes different players, maybe a bit different scenes. And so to validate the and so to better validate the methods, it is important to keep the same splitting when you are performing training of a deep learning method. This task is very complicated. Because we need to perform classification on a limited data set, but also the similarity between the different classes is very high. That's why we can call such challenge fine-grained classification from few examples. This year, uh, it has been proven that improvements were possible compared to last year, 9% better. Next year, we are planning to reconduct this task, but with a larger number of samples. We still need to agree how to split the data set. Maybe next year, training samples and test samples might come from the same video. This is something to determine to maybe make easier the task. Furthermore, we notice a great trend to use deep learning methods for classification. Why for this task, which contains a very limited amount of uh, videos, might be useful to use more uncrafted features to avoid uh, such overfitting that has been observed in all methods. Of course, new participants are most welcome. We encourage the current participants to still submit for next year. And please uh, do not hes hesitate to promote the task to your colleagues or uh, your friends, or even in your own lab if, uh, if you can. Thank you very much for your attention.